Well, hello. Come right in. Oh, George, we've got company. This is Bill Goodwin, speaking for Lever Brothers, makers of Swan, the new white floating soap that's pure as fine castile. Well, it's Tuesday night again, time for another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen and their guest, the co-producer and star of Universal's picture, Flesh and Fantasy, Charles Boyer, with Jimmy Cash, Felix Mills, and his orchestra. And now, meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. Well, tonight we find George and Gracie just leaving their neighborhood movie where they've been watching a romantic Charles Boyer picture. Gracie is still under the spell of her screen idol. Gracie, could you walk a little faster? (laughs) I said, could you walk a little faster? If you wish, Charles. Gracie, I'm George Burns, your husband, remember? I'm not Charles Boyer. Oh, well, that's life. <laughs> Come on, I want to stop in the cigar store. Oh, my, I'll never get over the way Charles Boyer kissed Barbara Stanwyck. <sighs> I wonder how it feels to be kissed like that. As soon as we get home, I'll show you. <laughs> oh, Mama's little dreamer. <laughs> Well, never mind. Here's the cigar stall. Well, good evening, Mr. Burns. Good evening, Stanley. Give me three Perfecto Royales, please. Yes, sir. Why, hello, Mrs. Burns. Hello, Stanley. My, my, you're looking positively radiant tonight. There's a sparkle in your eyes and a glow in your cheek that only a man could put there. It was a man, Stanley. Well, well, there must be more to Mr. Burns than meets the eye. <laughs> We've just been to see Charles Boyer. Oh. Oh! Oh, well, here are your cigars and your coupons. Thanks. <laughs> Gee, how do they do it? Three top-notch cigars for a nickel and coupons, too. Uh, how many coupons do you have now? 19,000. Gracious goodness. Yeah, only 6,000 more and I get a key ring. <laughs> oh, George, pay Stanley for these ten movie magazines, too. Ten movie magazines? Well, they all have articles about Charles Boyer. Look, Gracie, you can't... Reading, Stanley. Tis I, Bolingbroke. Hello, cue ball. <laughs> well, hello, Mr. Bolingbroke. Why, bless me if it isn't the Burnses. Both the lovely one and the other one. <laughs> well, well, this is a most fortuitous happenstance. It is? Yes. I have great news for you, dear lady. The Bolingbroke Little Theatre is about to open its winter theatrical season. I shall want you as my leading lady, naturally. Oh, naturally. Say, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could get Charles Boyer for my leading man? Oh, sure, sure, sure. (laughs) You could get him easy for around $25,000. Well, George, we wouldn't have to pay him a cent. He's free French. (laughs) Well, anyway, you're not going to get mixed up in that Bolingbroke's theatre. All he wants is your money. Sir, you insult me. I would not touch one cent of her money. No? No. She can give it directly to my landlady. (laughs) I thought so. Nothing doing. Get your movie magazines, Gracie. We're going home. Oh, and Stanley, uh, I'll take a copy of Cowboy Love Tales. Oh, uh, that is your favorite magazine, isn't it? Yes. What a coincidence. Uh, My opening play will be a dramatization of Cowboy Love Tales. Really? Yes. I can just picture your lovely wife in the role of Lucy, and you as the half-breed, Dirty Sam. <laughs> does, uh, does the part of the hero, Oklahoma Tex, happen to be open? Why, certainly, dear friend. Of course, there is that little matter of... I, I... Money? Uh, yes, yes. I... Uh... Well, here's, uh, here's five bucks. Oh, uh, cabbage from Mr. Morgenthau's Victory Garden. <laughs> Well, Gracie, I'm going to be a leading man. You and I are going to be lovers in the old Bar X. I still wish it were the cast Bar X. <laughs> oh, come on home. Gracie, it's one o'clock in the morning. Put away those silly movie magazines and let's get some sleep. But, George, did you know that Charles Boyer was awfully bashful as a boy? 
Oh, turn out the light. It says here he didn't get his first kiss until he was 19, and even then he wasn't thrilled. <laughs> no, huh? No. I guess those French generals aren't very attractive. <laughs> Turn out the light. The article I'm reading now is fascinating. Charles Boyer's Ten Rules for Being a Successful Lover. Turn out the light. That's the first rule. <laughs> Gracie, turn... Oh, go to sleep. Oh, nuts. Now there's someone at the door. Could it be Charles Boyer? Of course not. Oh, then you answer it. Oh, uh, ooh, boy, the floor's cold. Hiya, George. I saw the light on. Something wrong? Yeah, something's wrong. I want to sleep, and Gracie wants me to listen to Charles Boyer's advice on love. Oh. Well, let's face it, Daddy. You can use it. <laughs> now, look, funny man. No, I'm serious, George. You husbands get so you take your wives for granted. You forget the little niceties that mean so much to a woman. What do you mean? Well, take today, for example. Did you tell Gracie you loved her? Well, no. Well, did you tell her how pretty she is? No. Did you tell her Swan is four soaps in one? Now, Bill. Well, that's music to a woman's ears, George. Here's a white floating soap that's tops for her bath or complexion, wonderful for bathing the baby, and perfect for dishes and light laundry. Four swell soaps in one, a great wartime buy. Bill, I'm in no mood to stand here in my bare feet at one o'clock in the morning and blow bubbles with you. <laughs> well, okay, I was just trying to help get Gracie to love you. Well, Gracie does love... Doesn't she? Well, there's one sure way to find out. Oh. First, you fill the sink with dirty dishes. Dishes? Yes, yeah, sure. Now, you stand beside the sink and tell Gracie she can have her choice. She can either wash the dishes with Swan or kiss you. Now, Bill... And if she takes you, brother, that's love. <laughs> Good night, Bill. George, that's a real test. Gracie knows those long-lasting Swan suds help make washing dishes a cinch. Bill, have you ever been kicked with a barefoot... And, and she knows Swan is so mild and gentle you don't have to worry about rough dish panty hands. I have very sharp... Toenails. Uh, <laughs> good night, George. Good night, good oh, night. Bill, Bill, it's you. Oh, hello, Gracie. Oh, listen, listen to what I just read about Charles Boyer. It seems that years ago in France, a man named Pierre Dumont befriended him. Good night. I'm going to bed. Yeah, good night, Pierre. Good, good night. Well, this Dumont has a daughter named Marie who lives in America now, and Mr. Boyer has been looking for Marie so he can repay his debt to her father. Marie? Say, I'm engaged to a girl named Marie. Is her last name Dumont? Well, I didn't catch her last name. <laughs> oh, gee, I wish I were Marie Dumont. Then Charles Boyer would be glad to play my leading man. Say, why wouldn't I be Marie Dumont? Oh, Gracie, you wouldn't. Oh, wouldn't I? Oh, I, I wonder what time Frenchmen get up in the morning. <laughs> Yes? Oh, uh, good morning, Mr. Boyer. Is there something you wish? Uh, pardon me? Is there something you wish? Oh, but, but don't you recognize me, Mr. Boyer? No, I'm sorry. Oh, I I'm little Marie. You know, Marie Dumont? No! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> You are actually the daughter of my dear old friend? Beaucoup, why not? Oh, oh, Monsieur Merveilleux, entrez dans ma petite Marie. Je vais presque abandonner l'espoir de vous retrouver. Vous voilà, Monsieur Magnifique. Well, somehow I knew you'd say that. <laughs> Asseyez-vous, mon petit, racontez-moi. Il y a longtemps que vous êtes en Amérique. Qu'est-ce que vous faites? Où habitez-vous? Well, uh, yes and no. <laughs> Why don't you speak to me in French, Marie? Oh, well, I've gotten in the habit of speaking American. You know, this country is full of Americans. <laughs> <laughs> ah, still the same, Marie. As a girl, you always made the little jokes. I, I did? Yes, you told terrible fibs. Oh, I guess I haven't changed a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were quite small when I saw you last. But I seem to remember that your hair was black. Well, they have beauty shops in America. Oh. <laughs> and I thought your nose was longer. They have plastic surgeons, too. Oh. And instead of blue, I thought your eyes were brown. Wonderful country, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps my memory fails me. It's been so many years since I held you on my lap. You... You used to hold me on your lap? But of course. Don't you remember? No, darn it. <laughs> well, now I want to hear all about your dear Papa. How does he look? Uh, papa? Well, let's 
see. How long since you've seen him? Oh, 15 years. Well, he looks 15 years older. <laughs> He's tasting, but it could happen to anyone. Mm, poor Papa. He's gotten very gray. Gray? Well, that's strange. 15 years ago, he was completely bald. <laughs> well, so much for Papa. But how could a bald man become gray? Oh, you're talking about his hair. Uh, yes. Oh, I was talking about his complexion. Oh, a gray complexion? Not so good either, huh? Oh, very bad. Well, so much for Papa. Well, my fan sounds like a sick man. Has he given up uh, his hobby? Oh, no, no. He, he's sick in bed, but he keeps up his hobby right in his bedroom. <laughs> Well, that's, that's amazing. Why? Well, his hobby is raising goats. <laughs> well, so much for Papa. Well, uh, another thing I would like to know about him. Well, Mr. Boy, I hate to change the subject. Why don't you change it? Oh, I understand. <laughs> I understand. It troubles you to speak of poor Dumont. Well, it certainly does. Let's speak of me and the play I'm going to be in. Oh, so my little Mary has gone on the stage. Oh, yes. And I'd love you to be my leading man, uh, would you? <laughs> Oh, well, please do it for me. You play the hero, Oklahoma Tex. Oklahoma Tex? Yes. Oh, say you'll do it. Well, how can I refuse? After all, it's a small way in which to repay my debt to Pierre. Who? Uh, your papa. Oh, him. Well, if you'll come over to 202 Cannon Drive this afternoon, we'll rehearse our part. All right, I'll be there, Mary. Oh, oh and, and by the way, at my house, you'd better call me Gracie. Uh, my husband always does. Your husband? Oh, you're married. Yes. So don't mention how I used to sit on your lap. <laughs> it's still it's still pretty romantic looking. <laughs> but why does your husband call you Gracie instead of Marie? Well, he can't speak French. <laughs> but, uh, George is a wonderful man. Oh, I'm sure he is. Oh, by the way, uh, did you keep your promise to your father? My promise? Oh, Oh, of course I kept it. Uh, of course. Of course. What was it? <laughs> well, you promised to marry a man in the same business as your father. Oh, that promise. Sure, I kept it. I wouldn't disappoint Papa. <laughs> well, well. So my little Mary is married to a wine merchant. Uh, wine merchant? Oh, yes. I can't believe it. Oh, it's hard for me, too. <laughs> what is his name again? George. George Burns. George Burns, the wine merchant. Well, I'll be running along. See you at my house this afternoon. Ah, uh, it will be good to taste real wine again. Oh, won't it, though? How do you like your wine? Straight over 7-Up. <laughs> <laughs> again, you joke with me. Alors, au revoir, ma petite. Je me réjouis de vous revoir cet après-midi. Oh, how true. <laughs> young singer Jimmy Cash with Felix Mills in the orchestra, the tune that Jerome Kern favorite from Showboat, the beautiful Why Do I Love You. I'm walking on the air, dear, for life is fair, dear, to love I'm in the seventh heaven, there's more than seven. Discovered in this sweet, improbable, and unreal world, finding you has given me my ideal world. Why do I love you? Why do you love me? Why should there be two?
Well, Charles Boyer has just arrived at the Burns home, still under the impression that Gracie is the daughter of his old friend and that George is in the wine business. Why, Charles Boyer. How do you do? Uh, Your wife is expecting me. Really? Well, come in. Thank you. Your wife is a remarkable woman. She speaks English hopefully well, don't you think? Why, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I have no trouble understanding her. <laughs> oh, she told me about the business you're in. It must be fascinating. Oh, sure, we have our good years and bad years, of course. Well, naturally. I understand that uh, 1927 was the finest recent year. 1927? <laughs> yeah, I did pretty well that year. <laughs> Made a big success in Altoona. Altoona? Oh, I'm not familiar with it. Is it anything like uh, Sauterne? <laughs> Sauterne? Well, that's a new one on me. Is it, uh, is it near Scranton? <laughs> well, possibly, but uh, it's closer to Claret. <laughs> one of us must be on a detour. <laughs> Perhaps I can clear it up. Is this Altoona light? Well, it's light in the daytime, and (laughs) then it gets pretty dark. Light and dark? Hmm. Oh, I don't think I would like this Altoona. Well, it didn't seem bad in 1927, but uh, I like Bridgeport better. Which port? Bridgeport. It had more bright lights. Oh. Almost sparkle, hmm? Yeah, you could put it that way. Well, this Bridgeport must be similar to Champagne. (laughs) Well, Champagne is a lot further west, Illinois. (laughs) Oh, naturally, you mean the American Champagne. Oh, yes. Ever been in it? (laughs) Been in it? Don't tell me people bathe in Champagne. Well, uh, why not? They bathe in Altoona. <laughs> but don't, uh, don't the bubbles tickle? <laughs> the bubbles, huh? Yes. Didn't you ever hear of bubbles in champagne? No, but I knew a girl named Ginger in Peoria. <laughs> now, look. I'm speaking of champagne, the wine. Now, you seem rather tense for a man who is in the wine business. I'm not in the wine business. Well, that's funny. Your wife told me that you... Well, well, well. Mr. Boyer, I'm so glad to see you. Gracie, did you tell Mr. Boyer I was in the wine business? The... Oh. Oh, no, no. I meant I used to be in it. I used to press the grapes with my little bare feet. But George was never in the wine business. Oh, what a pity. He could have made a fortune with those feet of his. (laughs) Gracie, you used to press scrapes with your bed? please, George, please. Mr. Boyer wants to discuss our play. He's going to be my leading man, Oklahoma Tex, a rootin' tootin' cowboy. Now, uh, you know, never in my life have I rooted or tooted. (laughs) Gracie, I thought I was going to play Tex. Oh, yes, let your husband be the part, Mrs. Burns. I really don't believe I'm the type for a cowboy part. Oh, Mr. Boyer, you'd be a perfect cowboy. Well, you, you've even got the eyes for it. Big, dark brown eyes, just like a cow. Oh. <laughs> well, all right. I'll do it for your papa. Oh, you, you, you know Gracie's old man? My best friend. Gracie, where did Mr. Boyer oh, meet you? Oh, goodness. I mean, somebody's at the door. Come in. <coughs> Greetings, good people. Oh, hello, Mr. Bolingbroke. Uh, did you finish the play? All right. Here are the copies of the script. Still damp with the dew of my genius. Oh, good. Mr. Bolingbroke, this is our new leading man, Charles Boyer. How do you do? Sir, permit me to assure you that it is an honor and a privilege to meet such a celebrated actor as Nigel Bolingbroke. (laughs) Oh, murder. Here's your script, Charlie. And yours, Mrs. B. Hey, how about me? Haven't I got a part? Uh, no, However, I might create a role for you. Uh, 
Is your wallet on your person? <laughs> oh, it's in the den. Uh, then let us wend our way thither, eh? I create so much better in the presence of money. <laughs> okay, come on. Now, uh, Mrs. Burns, uh, forgive me if I seem to doubt, but are you sure that you are the daughter of Pierre Dumont? Oh, absolutely. Well, have you got a picture of him? A picture? Yes, a picture. Oh, oh, a picture. Um, uh, is that him on the wall? No, that's Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> oh, no, no, I meant the other wall. Oh, that's George Washington. You, well, you're very well educated, aren't you? Oh, but I assure you, Mr. Boyer, I am Marie Dumont. Well, is there someone who could confirm your story? I mean, some Frenchman who knew you and your father back in France? Some Frenchman? Oh, hello, well, Gracie. I... Oh, you, you have company. Why, Marcel Goodwin. <laughs> huh? Hello, Marcel. Oh, Gracie, it's just a finger wave. <laughs> hey, uh, isn't this Charles Boyer? Oh, you see, Mr. Boyer, that proves he's a Frenchman. He, he recognized you. Um, Mr. Boyer, I want you to meet Marcel Goodwin, who knew my father, Pierre Dumont, and who will tell you that I'm his daughter, and who probably can't stay long after he tells you. <laughs> oh, uh, well, how do you do, Mr. Boyer? Bonjour, Marcel. Bonjour. Comment ça va? Huh? Ça va bien? And, and who no longer speaks French. <laughs> Well, well, Mr. Goodwin, so you knew my old friend, Pierre Dumont. Well, so I've been told. I mean, uh, uh, yes, I've been told that you know him, too. How did he look when you last saw him? Um, well, I tell you, I had to talk to him through the door. He was, um, was taking a bath. Oh, now what did he say? Well, he said, uh, said, um, Marcel, he said, this is the greatest soap I ever bathed with. <laughs> And I said, well, sure, Pierre, that's Swan, the new white floating soap. He said, is it, Marcel? And I said, of course, Pierre. And Swan's not only great for your bath, but just the soap for bathing the baby. And it's great for dishes or light laundry. Swan is four swell soaps in one. <laughs> Pierre loved his bath. Oh, yeah. didn't he, though? Well, so much for Papa. Goodbye, Marcel. No, 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 wait. Uh, how about Madame Dumont? Of course, you saw her. Um, well, uh, yes, uh, she was bathing, too. <laughs> In the same tub. Oh, uh, uh, Papa was a great one to save water. <laughs> oh, well, no, you see, what I meant was he was bathing the baby in the, in the nursery. Oh, I see. And what did Madame Dumont say to you? Well, she said, Marcel, this is the greatest soap I ever bathed the baby with. <laughs> and I said, oh, sure, Madame, that's Swan. Doctors recommend Swan for bathing the baby. It's pure as fine Castile's, and it's also so mild, it's kind even to a little baby's tender skin. And then I said, and remember, Madame, since Swan is so mild... Well, it's just well for your hands and face, your complexion. And she said, oui, oui. Oui, oui, eh? <laughs> Talkative woman, Madame Dumont. Well, it's so much for Mama. Goodbye, Marcel. No, no, wait. Uh, didn't they speak of me? Oh, yes, of course they did. We, we talked about nothing else. Oh, and what did they say? Well, they said, um, Marcel, when you see Charles, tell him that Swan breaks in two. <laughs> tell him he can put half in the bathroom for his hands and face tub or shower and half in the kitchen for his dishes and light laundry. Well, au revoir, Charles. Au revoir, Marie. Oh, thank you, Marcel. Well, Mr. Boyer, see, now, do you believe me? Well, I would still like to know. Well, Mrs. Burns, everything is settled. For an additional three dollars, I created a splendid part for your husband. Yeah. As the curtain goes up, I sing a cowboy song off stage. <laughs> all right, all right, let's start. Curtain, music burns. I'm heading for the last roundup. Da da la do da la da dee da la da do da la da dee. Gonna saddle old plane for the last time and ride. Is that absolutely necessary? Oh, oh, of course. It's mood music. Oh, but don't you think he mood a little too loud? <laughs> and now we are ready for the first scene. Lucy and Oklahoma Tex are sitting in front of the ranch house. Lucy, speak. Uh, Tex, it's a lovely evening, isn't it? Well, go ahead, Mr. Boyer. Oh, no, look, uh, please, I, I don't think this part is for me. Oh, it's perfect for you. Now, come on. Uh, Tex, it's a lovely evening, isn't it? I reckon... <laughs> as how it is, ma'am, that there sure is a right 
Purty Sunset. <laughs> Brother. Tex, if I ask you something, will you answer me true? We all ain't in the habit of lying down home in Texas, ma'am. <laughs> This is the greatest thing since the invention of tear gas. Oh, Tex, I want the truth. Do you really, honest, and truly love me? Oh, Gacy, okay, this next line is too much. No, I just... Oh, I Mr. just come... Boy, what would Papa say? Oh, right. Oh, go on. Uh, Tex, I want the truth. Do you really, honest, and truly love me? I sure do, girl. <laughs> I got... I got the doggonest hankering for you. Oh. Tex, I love you too. Yippee. Well, now I've heard everything. No, okay, Gracie, I'm sorry, but I cannot do this play. Really, even for the daughter of my best friend. Say, that's been bothering me. Where did you know Gracie's father? Well, he lived outside of Paris. Sure. He lived in San Francisco. Well, he's not outside of Paris. <laughs> Gracie, your old man has never been out of this state. So, my suspicions were correct. You are not the daughter of Pierre Dumont. Of course not. She's Jughead Allen's daughter. <laughs> Oh, you've been up to your old tricks again, huh, Gracie? Well, I just did it so Mr. Boyer would play Oklahoma Tech, but I guess I was wrong. You certainly were. I'll apologize to him. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Boyer. And besides, you're much too fine an actor, much too handsome and romantic to play Oklahoma Tech. You wouldn't be believable as such a stupid character. Oh, thank you. Here, George, you've got your cup of your part back. <laughs> George and Gracie will be right back, so I'll just take a second to remind you that now is no time to let up in turning your waste kitchen fats into your butcher. They're desperately, urgently needed to make ammunition and for medicines to save the lives of our soldiers. So save those fats from your roasts, your frying, and your baking, and take them to your butchers. Thinking about it isn't enough. You've got to start saving those waste fats, and now. Do that, and you're taking an active part in this war. And now here's George and his ever-loving Mrs. Gracie. Oh, George, guess who's going to be on our program next week? Ida Lupino. Really? Yeah, and I'll tell you something amazing. Ida and I were in the tea room last week, and the fortune teller told Ida that she'd be one of the most handsome and charming men in the world on our program next Tuesday night. Oh, Gracie, you know how those fortune tellers exaggerate. Oh, I don't know, George. Bill Goodwin is pretty cute. <laughs> The makers of Swan, new white floating soap, join George and Gracie in inviting you to tune into your Columbia station again next week, same time, when our program will originate from the Naval Air Station, Terminal Island. We'll have as our guest Ida Lupino the following week, Harry Grant. Remember, George Burns and Gracie Allen, CBS next Tuesday night. Now, till next Tuesday, this is Bill Goodwin saying, well, I, Swan, how about you? Good night. <laughs>